Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to G Bear's Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. I'm sorry, yesterday I uh, did a video and uh, I started uploading it about 4 p.m. and uh, it got down to where it said three minutes remaining and locked up right there and wouldn't go any further. So it was probably because I had a rant in there about uh, our current. Uh, commander in well, I can't can't call him a commander in chief. He's a, he can't be a commander. He's a he's a uh, well. Let's skip that. They'll they'll probably be bump this video too. I got my uh, cloaked mothership up there. Huh? Pretty neat. Only one in the sky. So anyway, let's get down to business here. So, you remember the two batteries I got for free, and uh, I said I was going to try to rejuvenate them, and they were stone dead. When I hooked, uh, when I first hooked up the um, battery repair charger to it, it said, please connect the cables, and they were connected, so that meant that it read nothing. So I got my meter out, and I read the across the two terminals and it read nothing totally zip dead not even a fraction of a volt left in the battery and they've been sitting for a while and at this guy's uh property uh, probably i i would guess about close to a year so he asked me if i wanted them and i said yeah if i can't rejuvenate them i'll uh, use them for course so anyway <laughs> This is the, the first one that I had set up on my battery charger. And it wasn't doing really well. Every time I come in and check it, it would be up around 7 to 9 volts or so. And then as soon as I disconnected the charger and I took a reading, I could watch the uh, numbers on the meter dropping, dropping, dropping. So just the power the meter took to... Uh, to take a reading was enough to start dropping the voltage of the battery. So what did I do? I said, what the heck? Won't hurt to try. Good experiment. Let's see. So I took the battery outside and I set it up on that cluttered up table there with a bunch of junk on it. And I said, I've got a hundred watt solar panel from Harbor Freight. So I took the 100 watt solar panel out there and connected the positive and negative off the solar panel directly to the battery. Now, you're saying, what the heck, huh? Yeah, that's like, uh, let's see, there's there's 23.47 in that little um, 15 watt panel. So I would say it's probably close to 27 volts that was going directly into the battery in direct sunlight. And I just left it sitting out there two days straight, days and night. So the sun would set, the, uh, there was no charge going in. The next day as soon as the sun come up, there was a charge going in. And guess what? Let's see if I can do this one-handed here. I'll take this one over here. Let's see, that's on the positive. And this one goes on the negative. Look at that, 13.03 volts. And holding. And it's been holding now for two days. So that's a successful repair right there. I like that. So I said, why not do that to the other one? So I took this one out and set it out there and hooked up the solar panel. And it was hooked up just from this morning until uh, a couple hours ago. And this one was zeroed out. This was zero volts dead. So look, look at this. 5.176. So it's holding. We had 174, 176, 175. It's holding. So you say, well, why don't you leave it on the solar panel? 
Well, I'll get to that here in a minute. Let me shut off my meter so I don't kill my battery. And we'll move to part two of this, this series. And uh, I'm just going to move around here and set this uh, meter down in the back of my van just in case I need it I know where it is all right so last night sitting at the table uh, waiting for that video to upload and streaming an episode of uh, Gunsmoke and I said what the hell my lights went out I looked at the uh, the, the meter inside and uh, the charge controller said that uh, it was in error. It had nothing. So here's that 100 watt solar panel. And by the way, for those of you watching, this solar panel, uh, check your Harbor Freight um, ads. This solar panel right now is uh, on sale for 80 something dollars. If I have the picture I saved of it, I'll put that here in the video. But, uh, yeah, that's good, a good price. I wish I had the money. I'd go grab a couple more of these because these things have been really handy. I have two of them on the roof of my van that keeps uh, the batteries that I have in the back of the van for running an inverter um, charged up all day long. And I have plenty of power to run power tools whenever I'm on a job site. So, cool. So, why is this over here? Well... I had I came out and checked and I had six batteries that were really bad I mean at least two cells in them would uh, would barely register on my hydrometer and where is my, oh there's my hydrometer so it was reading in the red on the bottom of that gauge on a couple of uh, cells in six of the batteries so the, the blue tapes on there are the ones that were the worst. Those are the ones that had two cells in the red and one cell in the white or the gray. And uh, I said, well, that's what it, what it was. Like I told you, bad battery in the um, whole bank will just suck the power out of all the others. So... That, uh, that screw's all eaten up from the acid. So, I have the that uh, 100 watt solar panel out there is connected to these two down here. Nope. They're connected to, I'm sorry, they're connected to those two up there, the last two in line. Now, that one was good and this one no, that one was bad, this one was bad, this one was good, and this one was good, but this one was there, and this one was there, if, if you follow me. So what I did was I used my jumper cables to bypass them while I took them apart, and I switched the bad battery that was here over to here so it was close to the other bad battery. And I put the good battery over here, which was good to, close to the good other good battery here. So these two are, are good. Those two were bad. So I've got that solar panel directly charging into them right now. And I'm going to see if I can't uh, do the same thing I did to that battery I've showed you out there in the garage. So the jumper cables right now are here because this cable comes from another set of 100 watt solar panels that are in the back of the um, cabin here. That's a set of Harbor Freight 25 watt solar panels. There's four of them together in parallel and that's putting out um, my 27 volts at uh, uh, direct contact into my, uh, my batteries here. But I had one more set of bad batteries down here. 
and I didn't have another solar panel with alligator clips on it that I could use to go directly to that. So I put my jumper cables from this set down to that set and you can see I pulled them out of the circuit. They're not in the circuit anymore. So I put a temporary bolt in there where these used to be connected to this battery post and the um, negatives back there used to be connected to that negative battery post back here and I pulled those off and just um, temporarily bolted them together so it bypasses that battery and takes it out of the bank because they're just sucking the power out of the rest of my batteries so the rest of the batteries are being charged by solar I got 13.4 and 13.5 on here coming in at 12 amps and 97.8 uh, volts there's probably some dirt on my panels out there I need to go clean those but uh, I'm on float so the batteries are taking a charge from the system and I separated one of the harbor freights out you can see it's dead up there so I could use it to go directly into the batteries and that's a direct contact from the solar panel to the battery without going through any charge controllers is a higher voltage than what's needed and what I'm trying to do is boil the battery and um, kill the uh, the sediment that's in the bottom of the battery that's causing the problem with the dead cells so that's what I did on that other battery and it was successful so I said why not I had to take these batteries out of the system anyway and I don't want to go buy another set of batteries even though they're used batteries that I would have to put in here or refurbish batteries I don't want to buy more batteries and, and put them in here and then have them be stronger than the other batteries that I have in here because like I said this whole battery bank is 10 years old and it's way past its lifetime uh, expectancy so the best I can do right now is hope that I can get a couple of these things uh, rejuvenated and I'll leave them set up like this for a couple of days and see what I, uh, I'll come out here and check on uh, uh, tomorrow afternoon and see how we're doing and see what kind of voltage I have in there and see what my um, readings are in the cells. Now uh, this one had two bad cells in it. Let's see what we're getting right now. Oh, I'm in the gray. This one was in the red. Now it's in the gray. That's a pretty good sign. And this one... Yeah, this one's still in the red. And this one... Oh, that one's good. That one uh, came back. That one was in the gray also. So this one had one in the red and two in the gray. And uh, that's what the two on there is. And uh, let's see what this one's doing. And this one's right on borderline gray. Now remember, this has only been on here two hours. This one's uh, borderline gray, and those were both red before. And this one, I think, was also red. Yep, and now it's uh, still in the red, but it's borderline gray. It was, it was low red before. So that's a good thing. Looks like they're getting something good done to them. So I'll leave it at that for now. And uh, I had to come out last night and fire up the backup generator. It used up some of my gasoline at uh, Bidenomic prices. I don't like using gasoline. Well, thanks to everybody for joining me. I'll keep you updated as to what's going on here. This is G-Bear signing off.